Hello, you good-looking people on the internet. Dwayne Lesner here. We're going to be talking about architecture of NC2 on Azure. This video is going to help form the base for other videos, whether you're doing a deployment, you're doing DR for a lift and shift or a migration, or maybe using Nutanix Move to move workloads off non-Nutanix environments into Azure. And so one of the great benefits of the architecture is allowing our customers to deploy directly onto their existing environments. So we do require two Azure VNets. And so we have this one for PC, we have one for cluster management. This cluster management is where in this example, we're going to deploy our, better, our bare metal nodes to. And so you'll notice we have this delegated to Microsoft.BareMetal slash Azure hosted service. In Azure, you're only allowed one delegated subnet per VNet. So that's why you'll see two VNets being the requirement. This delegation allows uh, our service to uh, grab the bare metal nodes and then also help to configure networking. And then in the terms of for the PC management, we are deploying a scale out Prism uh, central for the purposes of deploying overlay networking. And so we'll form the cluster, deploy the nodes, form the cluster. And then once this is done, we take this subnet that's added for Prism Central and we add it to this cluster in Prism Element. And so we'll be able to use all of these IPs for our scale out Prism Central. Once Prism Central is up and running, we will start deploying our microservices platform, which is where we're going to set up and run our overlay networking. The overlay networking allows us to deploy multiple uh, Nutanix VPCs for our users. One, uh, these networks for guest traffic will have north and southbound connectivity through this Flow Gateway VM. This Flow Gateway VM is a native Azure resource. It's also highly available. If it goes down, we will deploy another uh, Flow Gateway VM. You'll see that it has two NICs. The, the NIC on for external access is where you can deploy uh, a network security group for allowing inbound traffic but also with the overlay networking, uh, virtual flow networking, you will also see the ability to provide your own policies uh, from a Nutanix administrator could also um, put in as well. For if your traffic, your north southbound traffic is going through the NAT, you'll also be able to provide native IPs from Azure for inbound access. And this is where this range is where those floating IPs are going to be given to your applications. You can configure your Nutanix VPCs to go out no NAT. So if you have a lot of Azure services you want to connect to, or in both cases, you just want to connect back to your on-prem environment, uh, you'd be able to do that as well. Now, when the deployment sets this up, these two VNets will be peered together. This VNet public here is not part of the deployment process. So this is something that you'd have to set up by yourself. This is commonly referred to in Azure as the hub network. And so really it's listed here just to show that you can use any type of VPN to connect back to your on-prem. We don't have any strict requirements. You could also use ExpressRoute if you wanted something that was more consistent going over the internet. Once you deploy this VNet and have it configured and then you do the peering, automatically all of the routing from where your bare metal nodes are sitting will be given routes inside of Azure to get uh, to this hub network. So that's something that uh, is you know, happening behind the scenes. So once your cluster is deployed, you can start spinning up virtual machines. You can create multiple VNets and have them isolated uh, between each other. If you're doing, uh, you know, if you have multiple customers on the cluster, as an example, trying to really utilize the hardware. I hope that gives you an overview of the architecture in Azure. Uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.